Was your dad alive when you wrote Of the Fields Lately? Yeah, he was. We became actually good friends after I wrote the first two plays. You weren't friends before that? Well, not, not, not the same way, no. Right. He, he didn't, uh, he lived to see Jitters, but he never lived to see A Saltwater Moon. Neither did my mother. And that's the, the one play I wish they had both lived to see, you know. And, yeah. and 49, yeah. 1949. Because I treated them much more kindly in those plays. Were you trepidatious, trepidatious when you wrote uh, about your parents in leaving home, thinking, are my mother and father ever going to see what I'm writing about them? No, I knew they'd see it. And um, you know, I, I was worried about what they would think, but not that worried. It wouldn't stop me. Right. So I don't know what that says about me. but. It says probably that I knew intuitively more about them than I realized, the kind of people they were. They didn't, they didn't hold any grudges towards me. Because it often comes up with the young writers who write about their family, who write about their immediate family. How raw do you make the truth? Um, I mean, there's a kid in Montreal just wrote the play, you know, wrote the film, I Killed My Mother. You know, how raw does a, does a young writer dare to be about people who are closest to him? Well, uh, the question about being raw doesn't never enter my mind. It's uh, whatever's the action in the play, m m motivating the characters. I never think of a, how raw the emotion is. I think of making the strongest action I can possibly come up with to hold that audience there while they watch it. Or else they're looking at their watch wondering, Hey, I wonder where I can get a latte after this show, you know. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if they're looking at their watches, you've lost them. You might as well go and sell them used cars. Let's talk about, let's compare two, or talk about two plays, as it were. Uh, Leaving Home, which is this, this force of a play that is about life and death and grabbed us all when we saw it. And Of the Fields Lately, um, which I adore as a play. Um, it has a lyricism to it, and it has, it is life and death, yeah. but there's a, a lyric and there's layers in it that haunt. Um, how did, did you write of the fields lately with the same, I'm going to make action, it's going to be life and death? Why is that play different than of the fields? In different in what sense? How it feels lately for, uh, for me has um. Hard to find the word. Has a yearning in it. Of a kind of different kind of temperature, and I don't want to get out too artsy fartsy here, but it has a different kind of haunt and yearning and ache in it. And leaving home is a more muscular um, drive to it. Equally as emotional, but this haunting yeah. yearning in, in other fields. I, I, think, I think probably that comes from the fact that my wife and I had split. And uh, I think that's where the, the yearning and the ache comes from, from the uh, separation. Right. Every, everything bleeds, everything in my life bleeds into my work in some way or other. Even if it's not obvious, it does. For example, um, Saltwater Moon is all again all about my wife and I. It's 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 really a play. People think it's a play about my father and mother. It's really a play about my wife and I. But it's it's, it's also a play about my father and mother. But the re the reason I understood it so well was because it was about my wife and I. And I could go back in time and put that in the past. Right what was happening to me at the moment I could put in the past and make it real. I understood it immediately. Because when, when I first started the, the play, Saltwater Moon, I thought, there's no way I can set a play in Newfoundland in 1926. She, I, you know, I wasn't born until 1939, and I only lived in Newfoundland for six years, the first six years of my life. I don't know the place well enough. But I did it because I wrote about my wife and I. 
Right. And also, I was smart enough to uh, make a, a liability into an asset. Because I, if I had gone down the road or, or inside that house in, the, in uh, Saltwater Moon, I wouldn't have been able to write the play. But I, could, I thought, if you, if, you, if you stick to the yard and the porch, you can do it. You know enough about, about the yard and the porch. But don't go inside that house and don't go down the road. So that's what I did. And I started out with about 20 characters and ended up with two. I kept throwing them out. Who were the other characters? Oh, all the, all the people that are mentioned in the play. There right. are all kinds of offstage characters. That, that's a t when I start a play, I never know how many characters I'm going to have. I don't know how many acts or how many scenes. Um, I, don't know, I don't know anything, really. It's all a discovery. And so what's the germ that starts a play for you? Usually a one or two characters in a situation of conflict. And the play, of course, doesn't, the, the play doesn't start when the curtain goes up. The play starts way, way back in the past. It always does. Always. All you're doing is finding this sort of a crest of a wave when a play opens. But that's not, the, that's not the beginning of the play. The b play began way in the past. Every one of my plays do that. I'm just realizing now that that is something that comes on stage in your plays, that we hear the preceding years in your plays yeah. really uh, potently, as it were. Whereas in other work, some, a lot of plays just start when they start and they finish. But yeah. the, what's happened before you kind of bring on stage in a way that and not in kind of memory speeches and not like, do you remember when speeches? You somehow, you bring that on. How? How do you do that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the answer. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how I do it. Uh, it, it, it's, it I guess it's because I have a, a, a certain amount of craft in my fingers and my fingers just do it. Um, And I, and I rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. I'm going to rewrite a page 60 times, you know, to get a simple line of, uh, simple page of dialogue. I'll write it 60 times. Different versions of the page or pruning it down? Pruning or it down, usually. Make, compressing it, all that. Right. Usually not, not a lot of changes, but it's just, it's just the compression. It's like, that's why I think I write poetry, you know. Right. And who's your first audience? Who first reads that page? Oh, I'm, I'm the audience. There's nobody else. The, I write a play for David French sitting in an empty theater in the middle of the first row. That's the audience. Because I know if I can satisfy that guy, and he's just an ordinary uh, theater goer. If I can satisfy him, I can satisfy her and him and that guy over there and, you know, this person. Because we're all alike. We're all, but I'm no better. I'm, I'm a good barometer, but I'm no better than anybody else. So I write for that guy. And are you a demanding David French? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every comma has to be in place. Every semicolon. Yeah, every period. Um, you know, every dot, dot, dot. You know, so. every monosyllable that doesn't belong in the play goes out the door. And every one that should be in the play stays in. That's why I demand actors get it word perfect. Because I have struggled. I mean, it, it takes me one year to four years to write a play. Right. One to four years to write a play. So I'm, I'm not dick, dicking around here. I'm, I know what I'm doing. And I've worked my ass off doing it. So somebody who comes along and thinks that they can change my line after reading the play once, they're full of shit. They're not getting anywhere with me. That's the Jacob Mercer in you? Yeah, that is. You haven't <laughs> seen anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most, uh, you and Bill working on all the different scripts you've worked on, what is the most radical changes that have come in a script that you've worked on? Has there any been that half of them have chucked out and you started again? Or is it basically the same? I mean, the thing is about Bill Glasgow, 
he was a tremendous man. He wasn't in the business of, of, of as some theaters are, of doing only hit plays. Bill was there, and he told me this once. He said, I'm, I'm more concerned about your development as a writer than you turn out a hit play all the time. And that was his attitude. Right. That was his, always his attitude. He would do anything I, I, uh, that I came up with because he thought it was further my development. Whereas nowadays, Jesus, if, you, if they don't think it's going to be a hit, they don't want to go near it. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the writer's development. But it is, it is, I mean, we are sitting in one of the better writers' theaters in, in Canada. Absolutely. And both Urjo and Richard uh, Rose have kept up that, yeah. that really strain, that strain of it.